Okay, this is when we get serious. Split him in two. Let's do it. Oh, okay. Yes, he means business. Hello, reformers, and welcome to a special feature of Battle Brothers. Maybe it will graduate from being a special feature if enough people enjoy it. Anyway, the point is, is that I've actually done a recent... Well, I, I'd say not really a poll, but I asked a question on my Facebook and I basically said, Hey, what kind of game or mod would you like to see on the channel in the near future? And a lot of people were in favor of seeing Battle Brothers because I actually did cover Battle Brothers in 2015 and that was in the Early Access version. And now Battle Brothers has come out of Early Access actually a while ago and I apparently missed this, but it is now a fully fledged game with full features and all kinds of wonderful things and so we are going to be creating our company and they are going to be called the Reformian Rebels. <laughs> I have no idea, just something like that. And let's see if we can change things around a little bit and if you haven't already make sure to go to my Facebook and then you can also participate in those kinds of posts in the future. Anyway. We can see here, maybe, oh, that, that, that seems kind of what I'd like to go for here because this is usually me, the snake is usually everything trying to kill me, as well as this big gaping maw thing. Pretty crazy. All right, so permanent destruction. Cities, towns, and castles can be permanently destroyed during, dur during a late game crisis. And having the world go down in flames is one of the many ways you can lose your campaign. This is recommended. Alright, so all crises will be randomly chosen between the options below. Right, let's just leave it up to random chance, shall we? If you would like to also check out this game, then you can very easily navigate to the store page through the link in the description. Which by chance, is also where my Facebook link is. Anyway, <laughs> economic difficulty, beginner, combat difficulty, beginner. I Contracts will pay more and you'll be able to carry more resources at once. Recommended for players new to the game. Well, I haven't played the game for such a long period of time. Might make a good idea for me to do that. So, uh, only a single save will exist. Hmm. Well, let's do it. Why not? Let's, let's do Iron Man. It all went wrong. Two days ago, the company was hired to track down Hoggart the Weasel and his band of raiders, but it was them who found you first. An ambush. Some joke about horses cut short by an arrow to the throat, arrows shooting in from everywhere and nowhere. Men holler and scream, a great volume before death. As the hail subsides, you draw your weapon with the rest of the men, only to collapse to your knees. An arrow has punctured your side. You shout in pain. A harried glance sees the men charge without you to make a valiant last stand, met in force as steel clashes with steel. You meet eyes with the captain, a last nod before his throat is cut. You're left in command now of what few men remain. Trembling in pain, you lean on your sword and with all the will you can muster, slowly rise again. Alright, so we have Halstein right here, and as you can see, he actually has a crossbow, so I guess we're gonna be, I, 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 I think, using that. Uh, that's a Brigand Thug, a Brigand Thug, and that's Hoggart. That's Hoggart himself. Raimar, the Berserker we have, and we also have Lothar, the Older. Alright, so let's, uh, let's move them, shall we? Shoot bolt. A quick pull of the trigger to loose a bolt. Must be reloaded after each shot. Alright, I'm just going to shoot him. Okay, apparently I'm not going to shoot him. Reload. Ready another bolt to be fired. Costs 7 AP to use and builds up 20 fatigue. Alright. Well, it seems like I can't do much more, so I will just reload. Hoggart is running away. Of course he is. What a scoundrel he is, isn't he? Alright, so we have a bunch of different abilities here. Just bear in mind that I'm going to be taking a little bit of extra time to learn the game. And so, yeah, well, learn the game again. Because, obviously, 
Many things have potentially changed. So let's have a look here. Thrust. A well-placed thrust attack that is hard to avoid or block. Sounds good. Right. So let me... Can I can I move there? Oh, yes, I can move there. So let's move over around there. And then can we thrust at him from here? We cannot thrust at him from here, unfortunately. It seems like that is not the case. Yes. So let's see now. Hmm. Maybe a spear wall. Let's do a spear wall. Why not? That sounds like a good plan to me. And now we have the Berserker. And what we're going to do with him is I'd actually like to go around and maybe kill this guy. Ooh, that, that, that actually worked pretty nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the next turn. And hopefully these guys are not going to kill my Berserker. Ooh, he's going for the Archer. You... Uh, Oh, he retreated. Hogart has retreated from the battle. That's not very good, is it? It's not very good for me. Okay, so we have a 67% chance to hit that guy. 50%. 67% right close to us? Ah, I guess that's just how it is. Nice damage. That was some nice damage right there. Okay, so I can technically try to escape, but he's going to hit me on the way, and I'm not entirely sure if I want to do that, but I could go to the Spearman guy. Oh, I dodged. Yes. That was fantastic. All right, so we're now going to absolutely murder this brigand thug. A slow overhead attack performed with two with full force to split a target in two from top to bottom has enough force that it always hits both head and body for additional damage. Oh, that was brutal, if ever I saw brutality. Oh, yes. All right, so, yeah, can I turn him at all, or... Maybe, uh, I, don't, I don't really want to get away or anything, so I guess I'm just going to go to the next person. And I'm going to get this guy. And we're just going to go right into his area, into his space. And then we're just going to use thrust against him. Remove a little bit of his armor, I suppose. Now, this guy's going to try and attack our berserker, but it's not really going to work, is it? That guy's also attempting... Whoa! Wow! Okay, so apparently Lothar is absolutely fantastic at defense. Very nice to see that. Okay, so apparently... Yeah, apparently I didn't reload, so let's just reload, and then I can shoot another bolt. 54%, 15%, obviously, because one our guy is standing right in the middle there. Okay, yes. I found that ranged characters in general are usually not very good when commanded by me, so I'm probably going to be attempting to focus on much more melee-oriented characters if I can. Okay, he's almost dead. And round swing. Mow down all the targets around you, foe and friend alike, with reckless round swing. Not hard to evade because it is not aimed at anything, but can be devastating if it connects. Right, well, we're not going to do that. We're just going to do split man once again. Or not. 50% chance to hit. Ah, that's really, unli that's really unlucky. I was going to say, that's really unlikely. Yeah, it is also unlikely, of course. Okay, so let's just reload and then shoot another bolt at this guy. There we go. Finally, we took him out. Nice. And now this guy's bleeding, unfortunately. But hopefully that's not going to make too much difference to us. And hopefully this guy's going to die. There we go. Yes. Okay. So thankfully, no one died. But just bear in mind that that could have gone a lot easier, in my opinion. That could have gone a lot easier. And so we're just going to loot all the items. Thank you very much. And what do we have here? A pickaxe and a buckler. And I also have the Fang Shire because I was one of the first people to have a copy of the game in the early access version. So that's a little thank you from the developers there. And uh, I think you can also buy that as DLC, or is it free? I'm not entirely sure. You're alive. You won. The adrenaline fades, and in its wake you can't help but sink back to the ground. Gritting your teeth, you snap the arrow's shaft. Your chest heaves, pain for breath, everything blurs. The company has been devastated, cut down to but a few men. And that bastard Hogart did justice to his name, fleeing like the weasel he is. What now, Captain? A voice says from behind. That's what the Berserker sounds like, apparently. It's Rymar the Berserker who sits down beside you, bedding his bloodied axe on his legs. You turn to him to reply, but before you can answer, he continues, 
Bernard's dead. They slit his throat. He was a good man and a damn good leader. But all it took was one mistake. That makes you the one in charge now, don't it? Halstein, the Impaler, joins the two of you, still breathing heavily. Then Lothar the Older. Save the ceremony and anointments for another day. Let's give the men a good burial and return to Westerholtz to collect our pay. The weasel's men are slain, after all. Besides, Captain, we ought to see to that wound before we lose you too. Wouldn't want to leave Halstein, the Impaler, in charge, right? So be it. Alright, so we are now going to explore around and make our way to Westerholtz. Alright, so we have gotten close to Westerholtz and we're going to be heading in there and hopefully getting paid. We already have 2,500 in our coffers as far as I can see, but a little bit more is always welcome. What a sorry display it must be for the onlookers as you arrive in Westerholtz. Four bloodied and beaten mercenaries down on their luck. The man who hired the company days ago, Bertold of Westerholtz, no doubt expected you to return in a more glorious fashion. Still, he welcomes you to his house and offers bread and wine while a servant fetches a healer. Few words are exchanged, except for the occasional grunt and wheeze, as an elderly man with shaky hands tends your wounds. A pin pierces your skin, the first of many stitches to come. You grit your teeth till you think you hear one break. Berthold of Westerholt sits beside you and asks if you took care of Hoggart. You shake your head. We killed his men, but the weasel eluded our blades in the end. The healer waves around a glowing fire poke, suggesting he wants to push it into your wound. You nod, and he does so. For a moment, that's all there is. You're not a man, but a pinch of fire. Flesh from flame, a golem of pain. Berthold of Westerholtz hands you a goblin of a goblet of wine. Not a goblin of wine. You did well, Selsort. The brigands have been removed, though it is a shame that Hoggart still lives. We expect to get paid for this. Berthold of Westerholtz gasps. Well, naturally, 400 crowns is agreed upon. He gestures towards a servant who rushes to your side with the pay in hand. I wonder... May I make use of your services one more time? I'd very much like to end the headache that is Hoggart once and for all. And I would pay you again, of course. Another 400 crowns, shall we say. Raymar the Berserker scoffs and turns to drink more wine, but Lothar the Older stands to speak. Yes, the company is in ruins, but we will rebuild it. Without the Reformian rebels, Rymar the Berserker would drink the crowns away and end up begging on the streets. And Halstein the Impaler, by the gods, we all know he'd go chasing the women folk until one stove his rotted head in. We need the Reformian rebels, it's all we have. What say you, Captain? Rymar the Berserker burps and raises his cup to you. Halstein the Impaler playfully thumbs his nose and nods. Kill that bastard, hey, Hoggart, or not, it's up to you, Captain. Yes, we have unfinished business with Hoggart. Berthold of Westerholtz claps his hands in satisfaction. Excellent. My little birds will need some time to find where Hoggart is hiding his hide now. In the meantime, I suggest you see about stocking up on supplies so that you'll be good and ready to end this when the time comes. I shall see you in a few days' time at the latest. As you leave Berthold of Westerholtz's house and stand on the outskirts of Westerholtz, Lothar the Older seeks a word with you. We need more men, Captain. I know I gave a big speech back there, but bravado won't do shite. We need more warm bodies in the ranks. Figure we find three good men, buy them some decent weapons, and dress them in the best armor we can afford. The man pauses to glance around. I bet this Bodung town's got a desperate peasant or two looking for a new life, or we could travel to Turmberg in the west. Them city folk aren't always as hardy as these country bumpkins, but we're more likely to find men with fighting experience stopping to rest there. That's what we shall do. Alright, so we can either go in here and speak to the people and hire someone, and I think we might actually try to do that. So, as you can see here, we actually have a bunch of very good people. I mean, look at this, up front, look at that, that's pretty crazy. 
Right. Wolf took to butchering not only for profit but for pleasure. Butchering a tiny pig became a scandal when it turned out to be a nobleman's pet. He fled to save his own bacon. Wolf's ears perk whenever a pig squeals. The same thing happens when a man screams. Interesting. I guess I'm going to take him and we'll get Thorismund as well because having two ranged characters is probably going to be pretty good. So let's get that. And I'm going to leave the other two here. And let's go into the marketplace and actually see what we have here. Probably like to sell the pickaxe. I mean, is it really going to be that good in comparison to what we could otherwise purchase? For example, a two-handed polearm or something like that? Actually, you know what we're going to do first? We're going to just leave Westerholtz for a, a quick second here. I'm going to pause this because the game will constantly run unless you pause it. So obviously it's kind of necessary for us to do that. All right. So let us go into our inventory here and we can take a look and see what these fellows actually have. So you can see here Thorismund has a wonky bow as well as a rugged surcoat, a hood and a quiver of arrows. And Wolf the Brave has nothing but a cleaver. Of course he does. And we're going to give him a shield. All right. So Rymar the Berserker, is he still injured? Mm, I, well, it doesn't. It doesn't seem like he. Yeah, he has light wounds, which are going to be healed in one day. That's pretty good. All right. So everyone else seems absolutely fine. And I'm going to give Halstein the Impaler, the Fangshire Helm, which is going to give him less fatigue as well and allows the wearer to see at night and negates any penalties due to nighttime which is actually pretty good and we also have some ground grains here and some bandages we can use those in combat and the pickaxe don't really need that and as you can see there are huge amounts of different perks that you'll be able to select as well so if you are a big fan of customizing your band then this is definitely the game for you. All right, so we are going to just zoom out here. We're going to go to Turnberg, and I'm going to be very, very careful about who we run into here because I'm a bit worried. Recruit at least three more men. Buy weapons and armor for your men. All right. Well, let's try and do that. That's going to be a bit difficult, I feel. Ooh, here we go. As Turnberg's skyline appears on the horizon, Halstein the Impaler seeks a word with you. Never been to Turnberg before, but I've been around ones that look a lot like it. Cities like these are great for selling goods, as all these prissy, pompous pricks love to have their goods delivered. With so many merchants, you can find almost everything you need, too. Keep an eye out for bargains, and don't get swindled by them cutthroat merchants. Rymar the Berserker sees fit to add his own opinion of what you should do. If there's a good tavern, I say that's where we should go first. Nothing helps a man down on his luck more than a good pint. Gods know we earned it. Halstein the Impaler shakes his head. You say that every time we stop into town. You say that even when you're already drunk. Yes, they're, they're bickering like an old married couple, are they not? Yes, very much so. All right, so we've arrived here. And let's see what we can do. Contracts are locked at the moment. And I can go into the tavern. Share news and rumors with the patrons. Pay for a round to get the patrons to share more news. And uh, if your lot is looking for work, I've heard that they're hiring sales swords over at Westerholt. So, well, that's not very good. And pay around for your men. Okay, so let's let's see if they have anything else. Don't trust the barber's potions. A friend of my cousin's friend's uncle drank one and it turned him into a toad, I swear. I'm sure. I once was a mercenary like you, but then I took an arrow to the knee. Oh, yes, of course. They had to do that, of course. <laughs> All right, so it doesn't seem like there's anyone here for us, which is kind of weird because I was hopeful that we'd be able to get a couple of mercenaries to join us from here. Maybe we should wait, though. Should we just, should we just actually wait? That might make sense. Let's just wait until daytime. It is dawn. Morning. Just going to wait a little bit more. There we go. All right. So let's go into Turnberg and actually see. There we go. Now we can hire some people. That's what we like to see. All right. So Tosting's got the eyes of a desert snake and shaping cards is his rattle. When he was a kid, a trickster's cup game showed him the value in hustling. Clever and quick thinking, the card shaper survives by moving before anyone else does. A skill as useful as any other in this world. All right. So we can go for him. or we, I guess we're literally just going to go for these three. What about Balduin the Loyal? Hmm. Sadly, his caravan began to sell human chattel while the profits were 
enormous, it garnered the attention of a local militia and their pitchforks. One ambush later and Baudouin was running for his life. Now uncertain of what to do, he seeks any opportunity that might come by. And what about this fellow? Erling was a servant to a decadent lord. He rarely made a mistake about his place in the world. One day, though, his masters beat him unconscious. When he awoke, he did so in the bed of a benevolent doctor who refused to return him to his employers. Instead, Erling was free to go, and his masters were told he had died. The man, though now free of his duties, still bears a great deal of humiliation and pain from his long, hard life. Aw, oh, that's kind of sad. All right, and Oswald the Builder... All right, I guess what we're going to do is we're just going to hire this guy. Balduin seems like a fun fellow to have around, and Tostig moves very, very quickly, so I guess we're going to get him too. Shall we get Oswald too? Oswald spent his youth poring over construction books with Ernest. Betrayed by a fellow architect, the mason bricked his rival inside the walls of his next project. It wasn't long until people started asking questions. Putting down his hammer and chisel for a hammer and sharpened chisel called a sword, Oswald now works in the field of mercenaries. Yes, let's get him as well. All right, and there's the marketplace. All right, so we're going to have to get them some cheap gear and things like that. Let's actually just take a quick look and see whether they actually need some stuff, because maybe they don't. All right, so let's take a quick look. All right, so he has bow, he has a cleaver, he doesn't have anything at all. We can give him a pickaxe. So I guess we could just give him a pickaxe. And maybe we can see about buying something for the others as well. Alright, so I headed back into the marketplace and I've tried to find some things that are actually pretty reasonably priced. And, well, you can see here that uh, most of it is kind of expensive. So I'm not entirely sure if I'll be able to uh, sustain them and indeed buy some food as well. That's probably what we need to do. So let me see if I can actually buy something here. I guess ground grains. That's the best I can do, really. You can actually get a war dog. A strong and loyal dog bred for war. Can be unleashed in battle for scouting, tracking, or running down routing enemies. Cool. I like that. All right, so otherwise... I've purchased a pitchfork, an axe, two shields, and two chess pieces. So that should hopefully be enough for our fellows. And hopefully enough to... Yes, there we go. We're going to be ready for the next battle. Okay, so let me just get everyone... As you can see, I've actually put them into a bit of a formation here. I don't know whether this makes any difference in actual combat. But if it does, we're going to be ready. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so Balduin, he already has a dagger. I don't know how good this dagger is, but it's going to have to do for him because I'm going to give Tostig this as well as the shield. And what is he actually wearing? The linen tunic is not as good as the leather tunic, so I guess I'll just give him that. And he has a pitchfork. Ah, okay, so the pitchfork actually takes two slots. Obviously it does. And I guess we'll just give this guy the shield. And what else is he wearing? Linen tunic. Okay, we'll do that. There we go. And... I think that's literally all I can do. There doesn't seem to be much more, unfortunately. So let us make our way back to Berthold of Westerholtz. And hopefully he's going to be pleased to see that we have a much bigger army than we had beforehand. And uh, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't even know. Maybe, maybe we're going to run into something a bit, too, a bit too dastardly for us to handle. That's usually how it goes. Berthold of Westerholtz is pacing back and forth when you find him. The healer who damn near killed you with the fire poke is standing nearby. He's picking chunks of dried blood out of his fingernails. Berthold of Westerholtz claps his hands. Finally, you're here. I have good news. We got hold of one of Hoggart's former men. My good friend here had a nice little talk with the man, and now I know where Hoggart's licking his wounds. The healer clears his throat, splaying his fingers out like a maiden looking to paint them. He speaks as though he's identifying a disease he is about to excise. The brigand known as Hoggart is hiding in a small hut in the steppe to the west of here. Based upon my most civil discussion with one of his men, Hoggart knows the Reformian rebels is on his heels and will have gathered more men since the last time you met him. Nodding, Berthold of Westerholtz waves you off. Good luck, Selsword. We'll return with his head. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. It really depends. 
All right, so we can now zoom. You could just actually zoom out the entire way if you want, by the way. You can just take a huge look around the map. It is massive, by the way. And uh, yeah, otherwise, that's where we need to go, isn't it? All the way over there. Okay, so payment is 400 crowns. Travel to Hogarth's Refuge west of that and kill him. All right, let's do it. Let's get over there and see what we can do. An abandoned homestead with a collapsed roof. Unknown garrison. I assume he's got huge mounts. A few brigand thugs and a brigand poacher. All right. Let's go in. Engage. Right. So it seems like they've just put us into the battle. He only has four. We have nine. I think we should be pretty easily able to win this. But let's... I'm always really bad in the in the beginning of a fight because I actually have no idea what I should be doing. Hmm. Oh, well, let's see. Maybe a shield wall would be decent enough. Yeah, I can't even do that, actually. So, I guess uh, maybe I can go here. No, I can't go there. Maybe we, we will try to go. Hmm. No, you know what? I'll just I'll just leave it. Balduin does not have, unfortunately, a shield. He has a stabbing and a puncture attack. Ah, we might be able to shoot someone. So I'm going to go over here. And we have Wolf here, so he can cleave. He's got a decapitate skill. Going to try and do a little bit of flanking with him. Is that Hoggart right there? That is Hoggart. Right. Okay, can I shoot this? 22%, 22%, 5%. Really? That is, that is pretty awful. I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. Oh, he actually hit us? Are you serious? Come on now. Okay, well, never mind. Oh, I really, really badly want to hit this guy. Because I really don't want to lose Tostig, to be honest. I feel like that would be really sad, but... Well, if it happens, it happens. We might be able to get get him away. Should we try and get him away? I mean, he, he has got 9 HP. I feel like he's probably not going to survive. Oh, well, never mind. Guess we just have to go with it. Alright, we might be able to flank this guy. We could flank, flank Hoggart, or we could try and get around... I'm going to try and actually get around to the poacher. Okay, now let's see if I can maybe get around here. Well, it seems like we've lost someone already. Yes, Tostig. Tostig has been eliminated, as well as, I think, someone else. Lothar. Oh, no. Lothar the Old was also slain here. That is awful. Okay, well, let's see if we can take this guy down. 47% chance to hit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, this is when we get serious. Split him in two. Let's do it. Oh, okay. Yes, he means business. He certainly does. All right, let's go. Let's go ahead. And I guess we'll try and attack him next turn if we can. Hmm. Can I? Uh, I can attack that. Yes. Let's do it. 14%. 14%? Are you serious? 
Why, 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 why is it so, why is it so low? 61, ah, there we go, that's much better. Yes. Thirty-two percent. I'm gonna do it anyway, just just because. What is this? Repel. Poke and shove at a target in order to force it away from the user by one tile. All right. Hmm. I can break his armor actually. Twenty-four percent chance to hit with that though. Hmm, he is very, very well defended, shall we say. Okay, let's see now. Puncture, well placed attack at the opponent's armor's weak spots. Ignores all armor, but is harder to hit with. Alright, well, let's just attack him normally then. That did not work as intended. Thank you very much. Hmm, luckily we're having quite a bit of well, should we say luck with not getting hit there? Oh yeah, we're starting to get through his armor. Ooh, oh that, oh that was crazy! Wow, that was a lot of damage dealt right there. I don't even know how how that happened, but. It happened. You can see here. What is it? Wolf the Brave uses cleave and hits him. Wow. That was... That was pretty crazy. What was he trying to do? What was he actually trying to do? That is... Wow, that's amazing. Okay. Seems like we're good then. Nice. Alright, so there you go. We did lose two, but... That is, that is how Battle Brothers goes. Unless you are being extremely careful and playing very, very slowly, you, got, you are going to lose some people. But that's okay, because that means that the other people will gain levels, experience, loot, all that sort of stuff. And, well, you're just going to get stronger and stronger as time goes on. I mean, look at that. We've got a malicious spear, we've got a hatchet, we've got a wooden stick. How can you say no to a wooden stick? Hoggart lies dead in a pool of his own blood, skewered into a grotesque and panicked pose. He didn't wheel his way out of this one. You put a boot on his corpse and look to your men. For the company. For all the men who have fallen. Thorisman spits on the dead man's face. Let's take this bastard's head and get back to Westerholtz. Yeah, and time to get paid. Alright, so if you've enjoyed this, then let me know. Post a comment and do whatever else you want to do. Leave a thumbs up if you like. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.